first thing that everybody wants to do is to just quickly assess the situation. Um, if you're not sure if the animal has passed away or not, it does not hurt to do CPR. You are never ever going to do harm by trying to do CPR. So I think that's the really take home message. It doesn't hurt to try. Um, just a couple of really quick things that you can do just to assess whether or not we have any signs of life. Um, obviously you have, I think, stethoscopes as far as I understand. So um, if anybody, if you guys have animals at home, just throw your stethoscope on and listen. And you only need a couple of seconds to do that. Obviously watching the chest move up and down, a hand in front of the nose to feel. And then another really quick thing I know, which is not uh, probably nice to think about, but it's called a corneal reflex, is you take your finger and you just touch the eye. If you get any kind of movement out of the eye or from the animal itself, there is a sign of life. If you don't get anything by touching the eye, that's probably a very good indication that there is no sign of life at all. So just, and you can do all of those things within about five to 10 seconds. You can be very, very rapid about that. So then we're gonna start CPR. Any size dog, so whether the dog is small to large, we always want them on their, um, with the left side up. So just as Nelson is kindly demonstrating to us, being a very good boy. Um, so Jody's gonna continue on and just talk to you about the respirations and I'm gonna show you how to do the compressions themselves. So dogs, hand over hand, doesn't matter, right over left, left over right, you're going to put your hands over top of where the heart is. So again, left elbow up to the chest, that's where the heart is. So a big dog, it might be back a little more, a small dog, it might be up, so try to get your hand and really the, uh, the palm of your hand right over top of that um, area where the heart is located, okay? And then the bigger dogs, even you know big men, you can use a lot of force here. Um, smaller dogs, less force. And I'm short, um, so you wanna try to get, when you're shorter, you can just stand on your tippy toes, but you wanna try to get your entire arms and your entire upper body into this. Tall guys, you may have to shrink down a little bit, but you wanna get that motion, okay? So That's large right. dog, it's 10 compressions per one breath. Your compressions can be as deep as one to two inches, okay? Medium dogs, it's going to be um, five compressions to one breath. Small cats and dogs, it's three compressions to one breath. Depending on the size of the animal, it's depending on how much pressure you're gonna put on your ambu bag. If it's a large dog, you're gonna give them lots of pressure. Small cat or dog, you only give them slight pressure. You're gonna watch as you're giving the breath how high the chest is expanding. You can do damage by giving too much pressure, so you have to really watch the pressure that you're using on the ambu bag. And I think if you use that as well in combination with the amount of pressure that you're putting on the chest, so large dog, a lot of pressure on the ambu bag, a lot of pressure on the chest. Um, certainly, um, we don't like to think about the negatives of CPR, but uh, even in uh, a hospital situation, we can do damage to the chest wall, we can actually fracture a rib, we can cause a lot of bruising, but I think if we look at the big picture, that's something that we can deal with versus unfortunately having an animal that's deceased.